This is a short video about invariants. I'll be calling on the ancient Greek philosophers Aristotle and Socrates to help me explain the concept. I'll also be using a block of chocolate. Before you watch the video, make sure that you've tried to solve the chocolate cutting problem. If you don't even know what it is yet, go and watch the video about it. Also make sure you've watched the video on some tricks for devising algorithms. Let's begin. What's an invariant? Well, in mathematics or problem solving, an invariant is a function, quantity or property that remains unchanged when a specified transformation is applied. In other words, it's some aspect of a problem that remains fixed. And we can use this, as we'll see in a minute, to help us solve some problems. Across the bottom of the slide, you can see three pictures. Each of them is a, a different image of Aristotle. Now, we can tell this is Aristotle in all three images by looking for invariants that enable us to identify Aristotle. So we can see, for instance, if we look at his hair, that in all three of these images, the hair is different. So this is not an invariant across these three images of the face of Aristotle. We might look at clothing and we can see, well, we don't know anything about the clothing in the first two images, but in the picture on the right, there's a cloak. Again, however, that means the clothing is not invariant in these three images. Nor is the beard. There are two images with beards and one without. He's clean shaven. So what are the invariants that enable us to identify these three people as Aristotle? Well, they all have heads. And maybe the shape of the head would be one of these things. But perhaps more importantly, if we look at, say, the nose, the mouth and the eyes, the shapes of all these things are invariant between the images and that enables us to identify all three pictures as being of the same person, in this case, Aristotle. Could this person be Aristotle? Well, if we look at the beard, as we said, we can't really tell anything because we've only got two beards. But even so, we could, or two beards in the Aristotle pictures, but we could actually look at the beard and see that this is a very different beard to either of the two images of Aristotle that have beards. But more than that, if we go back to the invariants, we can see, for instance, that the shape of the nose of this top figure is very different. The shape of the eyes is also different, and the shape of the mouth is different. So these three things that are invariant across the bottom three images are not reflected in the top image. So in fact, that is not Aristotle. Now, if we put a beanie on the man at the top, does that make him Aristotle? Well, no, because the invariants haven't changed. We still don't have the eyes, nose or mouth, or the forehead, though it's hidden in this case, of Aristotle. So there's no way that that's Aristotle, in fact it's Socrates. Now what if we change the figure under the hat? Well in this case we can see the eyes, nose and mouth again match the eyes, noses and mouths of the three images at the bottom. And in fact that is Aristotle now even though he's wearing a beanie. We can take the beanie away and the invariants remain. This is still Aristotle. So as long as we don't change aspects of the problem that destroy the presence of the invariants, we can use them to determine solutions to some simple problems. Now in this case, we haven't really given you a mathematical problem, but here's a, another one. Suppose we have two boxes. The box on the left has 10 marbles, and the box on the right has 5 marbles. We've also got a coin which we're going to toss repeatedly. If the coin lands heads up, then we take a marble from the left box and put it into the right box. If the coin lands tails up, then we take a marble from the right box and we put it in the left box. So every time we toss a coin, we're going to move a marble one way or the other between the boxes. Now, the question is, could there ever be a state where the left box has three marbles and the right box nine marbles? How could we solve this problem? Well, we could actually toss coins, or we could pretend to toss coins and do the, the calculations. But there's a much simpler and faster way, and that is to look for invariance. The invariant of relevance in this case is that there are 15 marbles in total and that the rules 
only allow for moving marbles between boxes. So could there be a state with three marbles and nine marbles in the two boxes? Well no, because we would have lost three marbles. So the invariant, being the total number of marbles, remains unchanged and it would be impossible for us in this case to get a situation with 12 marbles. Okay, let's look at the chocolate cutting problem again. On the left is the block of chocolate as we bought it, and the aim of the puzzle is to find how few cuts we can make to cut the block into individual squares. Now, I'm going to write over on the right-hand side of the slide the number of total pieces we've got and the number of cuts we've made. One piece, no cuts. Now we've got one cut and two pieces. Two cuts and three pieces. Three cuts and four pieces. Four cuts and five pieces. Look for the invariant. Have you spotted it yet? Five cuts and six pieces. Well, what property of this system is invariant? Here it is. With six cuts, we had seven pieces of chocolate. So the number of pieces is one plus the number of cuts. That's invariant through all of the cuts we just made. Let's start the problem again, but this time we're going to cut it differently. The invariance noted at the bottom. Pieces equals one plus cuts. We've got one piece and zero cuts. Now I've got two pieces and one cut three pieces and two cuts. We're cutting it differently to before, but you'll notice that the number of pieces is still one plus the number of cuts. Four pieces, three cuts, and so on. Didn't change. Have a go now at answering the chocolate, uh, chocolate cutting problem on your own. Just remember, invariants are things that don't change. And sometimes they can help us solve problems even if we're not Aristotle. Thanks for watching.